Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be my January wrap up part one. This month I am taking part in the short stack readathon hosted by Cozy Reader Kelly and Kara of Wild Book Garden as well as the diverse baseline challenge hosted by Margarita and Brittany over on TikTok. I will link uh, the announcement video slash details of all of those below. The short stack readathon is about reading a bunch of short works uh, to sort of front load your year with a lot of feeling of accomplishment as you finish all these short works uh, so you don't feel like you're in a slog in the middle of January. And the Diverse Baseline Challenge is a year-long challenge that has three prompts per month and it is all about reading more books by BIPOC authors uh, and then diversifying within that uh, category. So for example, the prompts for January are to read poetry by a BIPOC author, a book by a Latina author, and a book by a BIPOC author with a fat main character. A few of which uh, crossed over with things I was already reading for the short stack readathon, so that worked out well for me. So as I go through these, I will try to remember uh, which um, prompts uh each book checks off and then at the end i will show you uh the bingo board for uh short stack readathon and show you all of my uh check marks which are quite a few check marks <laughs> a few of which i didn't realize i would be checking off uh but that i managed so let's get started after being in like a three month reading slump from October through December of last year, I'm really happy that uh, I am kicking off this year with quite a few books read, definitely partially uh, thanks to the short stack readathon. So the first book I have to talk about is Change Sings by Amanda Gorman and illustrated by Lauren Long. This is a children's anthem. It is a picture book with uh, illustrations of a young, a black child going around her city uh, and meeting other children and uh, them cleaning up and fixing up the city and doing uh, kindnesses for others and uh, working together and forming community which uh, and it's about being the change you want to see in the world and yeah I think that this is a picture book that uh, is accessible to the young readers that is aimed at while still being um, really nice for adults. Then we have So Lucky by Nicola Griffith. This is an own voices story uh, about a character who uh, becomes diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, relapsing remitting, and it is uh, billed as a psychological thriller. Um, most of it is about her um, overcoming internalized ableism and becoming a disability advocate and um, the, a lot about the physical feelings of having MS. Um, the pain, the weakness, um, the drugs that don't work um, and having to advocate for yourself with doctors and the ableism that she faces and her own very unhealthy reactions to a lot of it which is very understandable but also um, something that because she is at the beginning of the story at the beginning of the story the head of an AIDS charity I would have hoped that she would have addressed a lot of the ableism that she has by that point, but also it makes sense because a lot of able-bodied people who even work in the field of disability justice or advocating for disabled people don't actually know what it's like and have no idea how much internalized ableism they actually have. The horror aspects include um, the fear of a disease that is unpredictable and and the way it leads to dependence on others at the same time it leads to isolation um, and the pain the physical pain that comes with it as well as the fear instilled by capitalism that um, you're not necessarily able to work the same job you used to, if any job at all, when you have MS. And so 
there's a constant fear of your insurance uh, disappearing and then not having access to medical care um, because the US is uh, shitty. And then there is um, the character starts seeing shadows at the edge of her vision and feels like something is coming to get her. And then the other quite large um, looming threat is the very real uh, fact that hate crimes against disabled people are relatively common. Um, and she dealt with being assaulted when she was able-bodied um, as a young woman by becoming a martial artist. Um, and now that she is not able to physically defend herself, she has a lot of fear around being attacked, which is uh, justified um, because people do attack disabled people specifically, um, target them. I don't know a lot about MS. The only character I think I've seen who has it where it's shown to any sizable extent um, is in the show West Wing. And as far as I know, neither the actor playing the character who has MS uh, nor any of the writers actually have it. Um, so I don't know how good that portrayal is. So I learned a lot about MS and how it works in here. Um, there were a lot of details about that and how it's different while still recognizing how it's different for everyone. There's a cat in my lap now. Okay. Yeah, I think it was a really excellent look at internalized ableism as well as ableism coming from outside the person with a disability. A good look at disability culture because uh, our main character gets involved with a lot of other disabled people. Yeah, the reclaiming of uh, certain words that are used as slurs by um, able-bodied people um, that can be reclaimed by uh, people who actually are disabled. Also very much in line with everything that I've heard from other disabled people about how terrible the medical system is and how um, dangerous it is. Oh, also it's queer. Um, <laughs> the author and the main character uh, are both queer. I really love the conclusion. Um, really, really excellent conclusion in my opinion. And I'm interested in reading more of this author's work. This, I believe, uh, crosses off novella um, because it is 177 pages. Then we have North Ranger by Ray Terciero and Brie Indigo. This is somewhat inspired by Northanger Abbey, which is one of my less favorite Jane Austen works, but I think it was a really fun basis for this and I think it was a really well done retelling type thing. Um, this is about a Latina boy who falls in love with a white boy uh, in rural Texas, I think, set either in current day or in the last 10 years or so. So Cade's family is having some financial troubles, so he and his stepdad go to work on Henry's dad's farm uh, for the summer, and I, I really like the ranch hand type stuff. My grandpa was a cowboy ranch hand person, and that's how my dad grew up, so, um, it has some nostalgia for me, as well as me just really liking horses and having grown up with some horses and some cows. That part was fun. Focus of it is much like uh, the main character of Northanger Abbey enjoyed reading gothic novels, Cade enjoys re uh, watching horror movies. So that's a fairly large part of it. Uh, our two characters bond over horror movies and uh, we also uh, get to be friends with uh, <laughs> Henry with an I, short for Henrietta, Henry's Henry with a Y's sister. And there's quite a lot of homophobia to be dealt with in this book. Both of our boys are closeted but ultimately really sweet and I enjoyed a lot. There were a few times when the secondhand awkwardness was a bit painful <laughs> but other than that I really enjoyed it. Uh, four stars and uh, five stars to So Lucky. That one crosses off Latine author for the Diverse Baseline Challenge and uh, published in 2023 for Shortstack. 
Next we have by Raymond Antrobus, The Perseverance uh, Poetry Collection. Uh, this main character is uh, Black Jamaican English, um, British, specifically from England, but British is the nationality, and uh, is also deaf. So a lot of the poems deal with one or both of those things. Um, these poems were quite easy to understand, which isn't always the case with poetry. Um, and a few uh, poems or series of poems were interviews with other deaf people. Um, so I really enjoyed those. That was really cool to see. Deafness is another disability that I have not read many books by authors who are deaf and I haven't seen that many um, disabled characters and I haven't seen that many deaf characters in media. So I'm glad to have found this. There are also a couple of depictions of sign language in here. I assume... Um, I assume it's British Sign Language. Yeah, this author has at least one more collection of poems, so I think I'd like to read that as well. Um, and I gave this five stars. That checks off uh, Poetry by BIPOC author for uh, the Diverse Baseline Challenge, and both poetry and accomplishes one of your goals for the Short Stack Readathon because I have a goal this year of reading more works by disabled authors. I read a couple more of one of my favorite mangas, um, number four. 39 and 40 of Yona of the Dawn. <sighs> this checks off for short stack readathon um, favorite trope because uh, this has a uh, bodyguard character, um, which is one of my <laughs> favorite tropes, whether it's a romantic relationship with the bodyguard, a platonic relationship, any kind of relationship with the bodyguard, I really enjoy. Um, so that's in here. Uh, it's also a forward title and uh, a continuation of a series. And yeah, I am really enjoying the various arcs that fit within the overall arc of this story. I think that they all fit into that overall arc really well while also being distinguished from each other. Um, I really enjoy the characters. I'm continuing to see their relationships evolve. This has one particular morally gray character that I am very interested in seeing where the author goes with that character. And this manages to have a lot of side characters who are interesting and like I want to know their stories and you get to see some of their stories without ever taking the focus too far from our main characters. Um, which is something that some mangas I've read have trouble with balancing getting enough of the main characters that you're kind of there for with um, introducing other characters and telling enough about them for you to care about them. Very good series. Uh, fantasy series aimed at teenage girls. I don't remember what the word for manga um, of that type is, but it's that um, and it's good. <laughs> both five stars. Then Confetti Realms by Nadia Shamas, Carnessa, Hakuto Oshiro, and Micah Myers. This checks off the graphic novel prompt of Short Stack um, and it is about some teenagers, at least two of whom are queer, going off to a fantasy realm where they have to gather some teeth to give to this creepy guy um so that they can get back to their own realm and uh all of the people are like animal people like frog people uh or any other type of animal it's quite creepy and very weird and it is a lot about um the four people working out their relationships that are all very complicated with each other and they have some past traumas that they have to deal with and figure out how to address how they feel about themselves and each other. This one I gave four stars. Next we have Squished by Megan Wagner Lloyd and Michelle Mee Nutter. Uh, this is about a family of seven kids plus both parents uh, in I think a four bedroom house. Um, so there's a lot of juggling of bedrooms and a lot of parent parentification of um, the older kids especially the girl older child, not nearly as much the boy older child. And it is about uh, our main character not appreciating, not appreciating the parentification and really wanting her own room so she can at least have 
piece sometimes during the day and at night, as well as dealing with uh, somewhat complicated friendships. Our main character is 11, so this one's a middle grade. And I gave it 3.5 stars. Then I finally finished George Takei's They Call This Enemy, co-written with Justin Essinger and Stephen Scott, uh, and illustrated by Harmony Becker, all in black and white. And it is the story of George Takei's time as a child in an internment camp, followed by his um, work after that fighting for civil rights for all people, um, but especially BIPOC people. It goes into specifics about laws and things that Takei learned about uh, as an adult. Um, and things that his father told him after the fact when he was a teenager. It talks about different acts that were passed at different times. Yeah, a lot of it was information I was familiar with, but had a lot of extra specifics that I was not familiar with and was just told really excellently. The parts about Takei's work to bring awareness of what happened and also to fight for civil rights um, in the future was really encouraging and inspiring. Um, five stars. Then we have Two Roads by Joseph Bruchak. Um, this one crossed off short novel um, of the short stack readathon. This one is about two uh, self-identified hobos who uh, rode the rails during uh, the early 1930s. They are both Creek, although our um, main character does not know that at the beginning, and he ends up spending some time at a uh, boarding school because his father thinks that that will be the safest place for him to be and possibly a place for him to get opportunities to learn trades um, while he, while the father goes to Washington DC to uh, protest along with a large uh, swath of other unemployed veterans to get their bonuses that they were promised early. They basically were promised a retirement sort of thing, but um, in the midst of the Great Depression, they are worried they won't make it to uh, the time when they're able to collect that because they need something to live off of in the current times. So there are details about Native American boarding schools and a lot about that particular protest. Um, and uh, the end note talks a lot about how the author did his research, which is really interesting. Yeah, explained a lot about different um, perspectives and experiences that Native Americans have had with boarding schools. And yeah, it was really interesting. And um, I really loved our main character, the various people around him. It was all very interesting. And uh, the experience of hobos is something that I was very much not familiar with. Um, so that was interesting to learn as well. Five stars. Then The Hedge Witch by Carrie Thomas. This is a short work uh, set in the same world as Threadneedle, which I have not yet read, um, but it is about a plant witch who goes for the summer to stay with her aunt, who is specifically a hedge witch, um, and learn about hedge witchery. And um, all that stuff was really fun. Um, and there's a bit of a mystery going on in town and it's a little friend group that uh, has some interesting dynamics. And overall, uh, it was a really fun story. So I gave it 4.5 stars. We Could Have Been Friends, My Father and I by Raja Shahade. Um, I got for free because of the Read for Palestine readathon that happened uh, back in December from the publisher. And this is basically a biography of the author's father that is uh, based on uh, all of his father's papers that he found after his father died um, and he read through them and because uh, he hadn't talked to his father about a lot of these things um, he learned a lot about his father's perspective and realized that they had a lot more in common than he had thought when uh, his father was alive. It is about uh, his father fighting for the rights of Palestinians from uh, the 1940s through uh, 
the 1970s or so. And so there were a lot of details about different ways that Palestinians advocated for themselves and each other during those times and like legal battles that were fought and different um, reasons that people thought about two state versus one state solutions and uh, all the small injustices that were tallied under the great injustice of the colonization of Palestine. And yeah, it was really interesting. I read it really slowly. Obviously it took me about a month and a half to read a 150 page work. It's very clear about the timeline and it proceeds uh, in chronological order um, while occasionally jumping forward to talk about how things that were going on then relate to what's going on um, in the last 10 to 20 years. Um, so I think that was uh, also exceptionally well done. It is both a very factual book as well as an emotional book because it is about um, experiences of uh, this author's father and mixed with how he perceived his father and the relationship that they had. So uh, really well done. Five stars. Then Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber. This one, I think I got it because I heard it compared to Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. And it is a little bit like that. It is food uh, magic slash uh, magical ingredients that are cooked into food. A small town and a couple of romances. There are two perspectives. A young woman uh, who has just returned to town and her aunt who is uh, only maybe four or five years older than her. Family drama and it's set in the south. It's very white. Um, one of the char main characters mentions having before the book takes place having once been part of uh daughters of the confederacy uh so that was a bit icky it definitely had the cozy magical small town vibes that uh were advertised so i ended up giving it 3.5 stars then for the last prompt of the diverse baseline challenge a uh Book by a BIPOC author with a fattening character. I read The Love Con, which I really enjoyed. It is a romance between uh, two cosplayers who have been best friends since uh, age 13 or so. And um, I love a friends to lovers, especially a um, childhood friends to lovers. And I really love characters who are like super dedicated to each other. So I got to enjoy that a lot. Uh, this is also a fake dating type trope. Uh, one main character has been part of uh, a cosplay competition on TV and she pretends to be dating her best friend as part of this TV show and they're going to build their last cosplay for the show together and uh, be a duo. And I really liked all the details about building cosplay and coming up with ideas. I really liked a couple of relationships that our main characters had with other characters. And there's a fair amount of talk about how the TV show tries to slot our first main character into the uh, angry black woman trope and is fat phobic towards her. The sex scenes weren't totally my thing. Um, but overall I enjoyed it and gave it four stars. So those are the books that I've read in the first half of January. Um, I think I'm probably gonna slow down a bit because I'm gonna read a few uh, longer works in the second half of January. Here is my uh, filled out short stack readathon bingo board. Uh, I think I did pretty good, got at least two bingos I think. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. I do have several more short works slated but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to read them or if I'm going to read uh, other books for the second half. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!